Hello and welcome to Art and Self. I'm Cindy Ingram, your host and the founder of Art Class Curator, the Curated Connections Library, and the Art and Self Connection Circle. This is a podcast where we experience the range and depth of what it means to be human, seen through our connections and conversations about works of art. These art conversations are here to show you that art is here for you as a catalyst, a challenger, a coach, and a comfort. Before we get started, take a moment to fill up your lungs with a deep breath. Connect with your body and your mind and your spirit and get ready to discover what art has to show you. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to welcome Jane Mesa to the podcast. Welcome, Jane. Hi, thank you for having me. So before we get started, why don't you give our listeners an introduction to yourself? What are you up to? Well, I'm up to a lot of things lately. It feels like my husband and I are paranormal investigators. We have a YouTube channel called Unearthly History and Paranormal Investigation. We're on our fourth season right now, and we're currently working on our next episode. So it'll be season four, episode two is what we're working on right now. But yeah, we love it. I tell people it's a great couple's hobby to get into. (laughs) We also do paranormal investigation tours at a local bar here in Austin called The Tavern at 12th and Lamar. Got a lot of great history in it. And I'm also a tour guide for a tour company called Haunted ATX here in town. So we drive people around in classic hearses from the 90s, tell them all kinds of ghost stories. It's a great time. Oh, so fun. So how did you how did you get into all of that? Well, I've kind of always had a love for all things paranormal. I grew up in a haunted house um, that was built in the late 1800s. And that kind of really sparked my love. And then in college, I studied art history and American history a lot and just really stayed in with that. And then when I moved down to Austin, I had some friends that were working at Haunted ATX. And I asked them, I said, y'all, if you ever have a job opening like I'm your girl. I would love to drive a classic hearse (laughs) and tell ghost stories for a living. And then a month later, they had an opening and that was 2017 ago. So, (laughs) (laughs) and then the way we got into paranormal investigating, my husband was actually, or is still actually a drummer. He's a musician and he was active in his band. And then one of his bands went on a little bit of a lull. And we decided to start watching Ghost Adventures because a bunch of guests always recommended it to me. And I was like, I don't know if I want to get into that. Like Zach Bagans is a bit much, but we decided to bite the bullet, have a glass of wine and watch it one night. And it was the Whaley House episode. And that he got so into the equipment after that, he started looking up stuff. He's built some (laughs) of our equipment like he nerded out on it. So I tell people he does the tech and I do the history and feels of it all. (laughs) Oh, I love that. No, I used to be a huge fan of uh, Ghost Hunters. I've never heard of ghost adventures now i'm gonna look that one up oh you have to check it out (laughs) yeah it sounds like so fascinating so i before we pick the art i just really want to hear about your haunted house you grew up in or like or what's it what is tell me like um your top like favorite ghost interaction or you know so I'm actually working on a comic book about this right now. Um, I've got oh, cool. a friend of mine from college that's doing the illustration. But basically, we were the first family, like not to give too much out of the book, but we were the first mm-hmm. family that moved into this house. We moved in in the really early 90s. And the lady of the house, her last name was Sug. Miss um, Sug passed away in my childhood bedroom. And from time to time, I would see her in my room at night, just like sitting at my desk, hanging out, looked like she was maybe writing a letter or something, never got freaked out about it, but didn't really know who she was. And then living next door to us was my 66 year old best friend at the time. (laughs) Her name was Celeste, but she was actually the granddaughter of the family that built that house. And she was the one that told me all the cool lore about it, told me about her grandmother dying in the house. And so it was just, it was really fascinating to get like the experience of living there, the paranormal interactions, and then also someone who lived part of that history. So, and also who doesn't need a 66 year old best friend in elementary school? (laughs) (laughs) That sounds amazing. (laughs) It was pretty great. (laughs) Oh, that's so cool. Because you got the experience of it. And then you developed your love of history by learning all the stories about the... Oh, so cool. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll hear some more cool stories as we go. And I'm going to show you I have five works of art for you. It was very fascinating trying to find good like ghosty (laughs) type art for this, you know, a lot of them were just very explicit, like 
here's a ghost. <laughs> here's a painting of a ghost. So I tried to find one that were a little bit more mysterious, that were a little bit more, uh, you know, stuff to find. And there's some of them here too, where the artist has this, like channels the spirits and then the artists like and, and uh, they actually do the painting through her body. So there's there's that in here too. So, but um, what you'll do is I'm going to give you the titles and the artists just so the listeners can hear what I'm showing you. And then um, we'll link to those in the show notes so that, you know, they can see them as well. And then just pick the one that really intrigues you, the one that makes you want to look deeper, the one that, you know, just captures your attention. Okay, so this one is called Haunted House by Morris Cantor. And it's a little bit hard to see, but I don't know. I think you can kind of make it out. <laughs> it's really dark and it just, this one is called, or this is just untitled by Agatha. Uh, ooh, I should have looked up how to say her name before the episode, but it's W O J C I E C H O W S K Y. Wojciechowski. Yep. Something like that. <laughs> I support that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then we have a uh, ghost in the room by Dean Goya. Oh. And then we have Dust from Thought Forms by Tony Ausler and Strange Shadows by Gertrude Abercrombie. Any of those really captured on the floor. These are all so cool. Oh, good. Um, can I see the first one again? I God. Ooh. Okay, I'm torn between the first one that you showed me, the second one, and then the last one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, they're they're all three speaking to me for different reasons. Uh like I would hang that last one up in my house today. Yeah, today. I, I would do. <laughs> oh, I love her. And I know all that symbolism is gonna be great. Um, I kind of think I want to do the first one you showed me. I just okay. I have some feels about that. Okay, sounds good. All right, let me make it a little bit bigger. So you've chosen Haunted House by Morris Cantor from 1930. So what drew you to this? What what made you want to pick this one? Okay, very first and foremost, the shadow figure that's pretty prominent on the right side over there, there's little images that you can see within them. And as somebody that has guests take pictures all the time and say, oh, is this a this? Is this a that? It kind of like, I don't know if that was the artist's intention to do that or if it's like a pareidolia effect, but that's kind of what drew it to me. And then I saw the light over on the other side and I don't know, it's dark in all the right places. Nice. Okay. So before we start interpreting and and figuring out what this painting is all about, um, let's do a description for our listeners. So how about you start and then I'll fill in any, any places that I noticed as well. So you've got the perspective of a room. It has some really nice white wainscoting and a nice white fireplace. There's nothing in the fireplace. It's noticeably empty. There's neither unlit logs or a fire going. And it's about the same darkness as the elements that are around it that kind of create this vignette effect as you're looking into the room. One of the other things I love is there's this solitary chair that seems to be directly across from the perspective. And the way that the light is hitting it doesn't entirely make sense with the other things in the room, but I enjoy it. (laughs) Excellent. Yeah. And the room has... It's kind of an old fashioned type of room. There's a floral wallpaper. There's a, a painting hanging of a man. And there's another painting of a sailboat on the water. And then there's, a, you know, patterned, old fashioned pattern curtains with the, what is that at the top? My mom always had those on her curtains. The, oh, the little frilly things at the top. Yeah, the frilly things at the top. Whatever. I don't see those as much anymore. Maybe just my <laughs> house, I don't have them. You know, uh, candle holders on the chandelier, the fireplace mantle has like uh, columns and and stuff kind of carved there. It has like carved wood look to it. Mm -hmm. Very kind of old fashioned, old type of space. Now that I've brightened my computer screen a little bit, I can see that that's like it's almost like houses within that shadow figure off to the right. Oh, I'm glad you brightened it up a little bit. Yeah, this is it's it, it is hard to see. So the the vignette that you talked about. There's a like an outline of a figure, and there on the right, there's a table at the bottom, and oh, in the out, outline of the figure, there's it looks like a nighttime scene of a of a town, or you know, it's like a bunch of houses with the lights um, in the windows, more houses kind of along the bottom, more houses along the top, and a 
just a, I don't know what shape that is, but there's it's just kind of cut into the room is this whole like nighttime house scene. And there's another chair that I've just. Oh, I see that just. too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the room is bleeding into the outside. It's basically. almost like you're walking between the two worlds. Like in, you're in yeah. like this portal experience or like mid portal experience. Ooh. Ooh. I love that. <laughs> you know, like give me little chills. <laughs> love that. Okay. So me. what is really calling you to talk about first? What? What's drawing? Yeah, the chair is so intriguing, but I think I have follow up questions now that I've noticed the second chair. But I am obsessed with this bleed together between I'm calling it the spirit world and the mm-hmm. fireplace right there. Like that's one of the few places where the artist really includes color in that ghost world. Yeah, see a little green with the light and everything. Like I just I love that bleeding together of the two worlds. And it kind of reminds me of that Doctor Who episode where they're time traveling through space. Like, um, and that narrowed it down. Um, <laughs> every, every Doctor Who episode. Where, um, it's uh, Madame Bovary is the episode. I'm not, yeah, is it? I don't know. I've only seen know. the first season, I think, or maybe two seasons. So. I'll send you a link to the episode. It's fascinating. <laughs> I'm doing it no justice. But it does kind of have that feel of where they like, in this episode, they travel through the fireplace between like mm. her reality and you know, revolutionary France and their reality in space future. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the inside of the, the, this world with all the, the houses is it, it delineated with a pretty straight line on the left, but then it flows into the fireplace. So like the interior of the fireplace is, is this world too. So mm. it's, it's really fascinating to imagine like you could just, crawl through the fireplace as one way to get into Mm -hmm. that world. Well, and I enjoy that that straight line between the worlds, it's kind of above the fireplace is parallel to the window that you can see across the Mm -hmm. room. Like something about that just really lines up the two worlds together for me. Yeah. Now I do wonder about the paintings on the wall. Those are interesting inclusions. Yeah. It makes me wonder if, the spirit outline of the figure that we see on the right, if that is a painting of him. I could see that being the implication. I could see that, especially with kind of like the shape of the shoulders that we're looking at and the perspective he's kind of turned. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, so if this is, you know, the spirit world and sort of the physical world meeting in this one space, What is your like understanding of the spirit world? And like, I'm very logical person. I'm like, I need to know exactly how this works. (laughs) Like, how does it work in your mind or does it? I think that (laughs) that's the good part about being in a field with no experts is it's literally the wild west, philosophically speaking. Yeah. But I think it's, it's parallel to us in a sense. I saw a really cool TikTok the other day where somebody described it as, you know, when you were a little kid and you fell asleep at like a family gathering and your parents carried you back and put you to bed and you could still hear the party and the, I'm getting chill box talking about. I think it's kind of like that. I think it's like, we can hear the party going on. We know it's happening and we're just kind of present, but not present with it. Okay. So it's almost existing simultaneously as us in our same physical space, but mm-hmm. it's some people then would be, are just more aware of it who have heightened senses to mm-hmm. experience it. That's been my experience at least. And it's kind of I, like, I wasn't one of those people that was lucky enough to be like born with any kind of abilities. Like I'm not a medium, I'm not a psychic, yeah. but I hear and I see things that line up for me and it's something I've really worked at. Like I really work my spiritual muscle so that I can be able to do the things that I'm doing, you know? Oh, so what does that look like? How do you, how do you work that muscle? Um, A lot of it is just saying yes to stuff when you hear it. Like if something starts to line up and you see a pattern, you're like, okay, I'm going to listen to that. And sometimes it makes sense. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes when I'm with tour guests, like for example, I had a guest a few weeks ago that was coping with a loss of a friend. And and she was really struggling with it. And for some reason, the word eel sushi came up in my head. And I was like, Mm. I'm not going to say this to this lady because that's really weird. And so I looked, I was like, was there a food that you and your friends shared together that like something y'all bonded over? And she was like, oh, yes, this very specific type of eel sushi. And I was oh like, oh my gosh. 
<laughs> I just sat there and listened and had my game face on, not wanting to be like, holy crap. But um, And then after she said that, I was like, well, maybe next time you go to that restaurant, just order a little extra piece or have an extra soy sauce or something for her so she feels included. And it's just kind of stuff like that of like, now I don't walk up to every stranger and be like, did you know your grandfather's standing behind you? Because that's really terrible and creepy and intrusive. But if someone's asking me a question and I pick up on it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, you need to put flowers in this part of your house to make the ghosts happy. And they'll quit banging on the walls in the middle of the night. Or I, I just lean into it. And sometimes it goes with and sometimes it doesn't. So, oh. a lot of time with, so. that is fascinating. Oh, that when you said that eel sushi thing, just like complete full body chills. <laughs> I love that. Did you tell you, you, you mentioned the, you told her to, you know, order an extra piece. Did you tell her that you had thought of the word eel sushi? No, I oh. didn't. I did. I was just like, is there a food? Cause you don't want to just yeah. like jump in and be presumptuous about like, I'm channeling your friend right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, and I have had people who are, who have said that to me, like they've channeled to, you know, my, my dad or my grandfather and, and there, yeah, it, there's this confidence that they have that I'm just like, where does that confidence come from? Because I don't yeah. believe that. For, like, I need some proof because so I love that you kind of recognize that and just uh, eased into it. Yeah, um, well, not everybody wants to hear that news, but if they ask, I figure it's OK to give them an answer. So. Yeah, yeah, true. I love that. So describe how your understanding of the spirit world and this painting coexist together. Like, where are you seeing that in this, in this artwork? One of the things, and I don't know why I'm picking this up. Maybe it's just the weather today, but I get the feeling that in the spirit world part that we're seeing that it's cold. Like it just mm. looks like there's, I don't know. And there's that juxtaposition between like the warmth of the living world and the coldness. One of the other things I'm noticing is how still the room is versus a little more and there's nothing moving in the vignette yeah. parts of the darker spirit world area but it just feels a little more kinetic than it does in the room like the room feels very dead for lack of a better term yeah i get that too because well the the figure on the right has this wavy mm -hmm. you know his his arm and the shoulder and the head it's all very curved lines very wavy and he's putting off his i say he they are putting off a shadow do you mm -hmm. see that onto that table? Is the table a part of the spirit world or is a table in the real, in, in the physical world? I'm guessing it's part of the physical world. Cause see, if you look at the part of the tablecloth that's facing closer to us, it kind of mm -hmm. looks like there's still some of that inclusion of like the, the brush strokes and those nighttime elements in the spirit world. Yeah. But I kind of enjoy how you can't really tell if it's like lacy or if it's solid, which kind of lends to that like ethereal in-betweenness of it. Kind of like yeah. if you look over at the cushion of the chair, how it kind of blends in almost with those roofs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's so cool how it's it's layered that it's not like there. Here's the spirit world. Here's the physical world, but they're they're interacting. The figure is between the table and the room, so the figure is then in the room. Oh, mm -hmm. and now, now I'm trying to imagine this is actually a physical space and what that would actually look like if we are, if I were to go in and how the the room would be arranged. It's really Mm -hmm. Well, and the other thing that keeps intriguing me and that kind of makes me have a parallel between like my research and looking at this painting is that light that's in the spirit world over there. Mm -hmm. And again, that's the only inclusion of color really in that area. Yeah. And I've had people tell me that ghosts kind of like look for lights or look for commonality in people. Um, when we very first started ghost hunting in 2019, um, to start with, we did no previous research into how to safely do this hobby, which is beyond dumb. <laughs> <laughs> You're dealing with an unseen universe, like educate yourself a little bit. You know? <laughs> like, and um, me and a friend of mine went out to like the local lore place in our small town where like everybody goes and plays Ouija board and junk like that. Every small town has a place like that. And we ran a piece of equipment out there and didn't do it properly. didn't open and close properly. And I wound up getting an attachment from that. And it stayed with me from September of 2019 until uh, January of 2020. And for a little bit, I was low key concerned that having the, after I got it removed from me, that I started the pandemic, like 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo style, but I did. <laughs> so, 
Wasn't me. <laughs> it took me about a year to tell my husband that, by the way, be like, did I ever mention to you that I thought I started the pandemic? <laughs> it was right at the same time. But um, one of the I, one of the reason, things I asked the professionals that we were working with to have it removed from me is um, like, why did this guy choose me? Like, what was I? Did I look vulnerable? Did I sass him and he's punishing me? And apparently I looked like his wife from when he was a a woman that he was in love with. And he kind of glommed onto me and acted out some of the toxic behaviors that he used to act out on her. And long story short, we were able to get him removed from me and I haven't had any problems since, thankfully. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So what did that, how did you know that there was an attachment? What did that feel like? What was that experience l- like for you during that few months where that was happening? It was draining. It was very draining. Like I'm a pretty high energy person. Like even if I didn't consume the mountain of caffeine that I consume every day, like I kind of have to always be moving. And I was just tired all the time, almost like I was sick, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't experiencing Mm -hmm. any symptoms of sickness. And then not to get too personal, but I had some behaviors that I thought I was in remission from come roaring back. My taste in food changed. And one of the things that really did it for us, like after all this tiredness and recessed behaviors and everything is Bert had built our SLS camera. And which basically what this is, is it's an Xbox Connect attached to an old tablet with some free software you can download onto it. And, you know, when you walk in front of the Connect, it maps you out like a stick figure. Mm. It'll do the same thing with stuff that you can't see with the raw eye. So we were in our home kind of, you know, running this piece of equipment, making sure it works, which never run equipment in your home like that. That's (laughs) a house full of crazy. Like, just don't do that. (laughs) So um, in my husband's desk chair, we saw a figure of, I'm calling it a man, but there weren't any like things that would indicate that it was a man, but it felt masculine to me. And it was intelligently responding to us. Like we would say, raise your arm. It would raise your arm. We asked it to get up and it did this thing. You know how old people kind of have to do like, I call it the two up before they get up. He did the two up. Like he was trying to stand up, but couldn't. Then I walked over by him with an EMF detector just to see if there would be any change because like we've got this interactive intelligent spirit literally at my husband's desk chair and it would lean back away from the equipment like it would want to be towards me but would lean away from the equipment and at one point I walked in front of the chair like between the camera and the chair and you could see it hop on my back like a backpack like not to compare it to another Doctor Who episode but there is another (laughs) Doctor Who episode out there (laughs) into this show by the way you'd love it (laughs) And, and it really freaked me out. And then that night we were in bed. It was super late at night. Um, we sleep with the TV on, but that night it was just kind of a dark screen. Like there wasn't a picture on when I woke up and I felt something like jolt the end of our bed. And so I kind of opened my eyes, like, did I just jerk in my sleep? And then my nightstand next to me, stuff started rattling around. Like it almost sounded like there was a mouse running around in my nightstand area. And I looked at the end of my bed and there was this, what looked like a man standing at the end of the bed, kind of outlined in maroon is the best way I can describe it. Like just reaching, not trying to get towards me, not coming any closer than to the other bed, but just reaching. So after that, I was like, okay, there's, there's something going on. We've got to get to the bottom of it. And it's now waking me up in the middle of the night. So we reached out to a psychic friend of ours. Um, she confirmed that there was something following me around that I picked it up in Athens and that it, or East Texas small town. And um, <laughs> <laughs> redacted. Um, <laughs> but um, and that it had been following me around and creating all these things. And like another thing was like I usually heal like freakishly quick. Like if I get a paper cut or nick myself shaving, but like nothing on my body was healing as quick as it usually Mm. would. And she said that that was the cause of that too. And so after that, we reached out to some friends of ours that are, I don't want to like blow their identity too much because I don't know if they want me to share this story or not, but they are professionals in various spiritual practices and they were able to meet up with us and help me get this guy removed from me. 
But one of the things I asked when we, and we had not shown them the video we captured, like didn't really give any details other than I got this going on. And they were like, oh yeah, you do. <laughs> like they did the things they need to do and like, oh, this is bad. And so I asked the psychic that was our different psychic than the one I had consulted with before. I said, was there something wrong with his leg? And she said, yeah, he had like a bandana on his leg and walked really stiff, which to me that went along with the same movement that he did when he was doing the two up to try to get up. So um, after the thing happened, the process, ritual, ceremony, whatever one wants to call it, uh, concluded. The next thing I remember was everything felt really quiet. Like when you walk into a room where there hasn't been anything on or like if the air conditioner clicks off in your house all of a sudden and you notice the quiet, like yeah. everything felt quiet. But then as I kept doing the ghost tours and we kept learning more, it's kind of like things got louder and more apparent after that, which wow. you're the first person I've really publicly shared this story oh. with. Today, so <laughs> wow. Breaking news. <laughs> well, thank you. I am uh, fascinating. That is just, Wow. I mean, what an experience like and, and to to not only have the experience and feel like you knew something was off and you knew like you kind of had this intuition that something was wrong, but like you had uh, all these other, you know, there's me looking for evidence again, but you had <laughs> you had multiple, multiple, multiple things like corroborating what happened to you. You had the, you know, the equipment and the, um, the other people and the, I mean, that's just Oh, it's so interesting. And I think when you're working with, again, a field where there's no experts, anytime you get something that pops up, you have to kind of make the assumption mundane before magical, because otherwise yeah. you look like a crazy ghost lady on the internet, which right. I wouldn't find that title, but I'd rather be <laughs> <laughs> a little more legitimate. So you kind of have to work out like, am I sick? Has something happened? Do I need to go back to therapy? Like you kind of work through those things. And if you're realizing everything's in place as it should be, except for these few things, you kind of have to look a little further. You know? Yeah. It's like you're experiencing, you know, your body's not healing and you're tired. You're like, oh, okay, well, I'll go, to, I'll go to the doctor. So you go there, you take that route and you don't automatically go to, yes, there's a spirit glommed on to me, but you know, <laughs> but there is, there's like, our bodies have so much wisdom in them of, you know, it's repressed emotion or there, you know, there, there's so many sensory things that we're just not even aware like are cognitively not aware of that are but mm -hmm. our bodies are um that's it's really fascinating oh well thank you for sharing that story that was yeah th thank you for being a space for it that felt really good <laughs> to hear here so <laughs> yeah and i i can see how you th would have thought you started the pandemic I, i'm i'm pretty sure you didn't but like <laughs> that's i mean if it comes up that i did Wah, wah, sorry like <laughs> i don't i don't i, I don't think you would be uh convicted there's no you know <laughs> there's, no proof. Court, like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> there's some like supernatural court that um no i think you're good <laughs> oh, man okay so you know as you're as you were talking about the story you know how you were um pointing the equipment at the desk chair and and you, the person was clearly in the chair i was looking at the chair and the painting and um it's now I'm picturing a ghost in that chair. Mm -hmm. So I, I I was watching your one of your episodes, the Gal the most recent one that was just at the top of your YouTube was Galveston, and and then oh you said at the beginning too that you had you 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 saw someone a figure sitting in your in your room, and then in the the was the Moody Mansion in Galveston you saw someone there too like what does that look like the lady in my room the main way she looked that I can remember most clearly about her is her dress was this really cool blue color it was kind of like an electric baby blue like it was a soft mm -hmm. blue that still had like that neon intensity to it and the brown color of her hair sometimes when I'm places that I'm familiar and a new ghost pops up, they'll be in that same kind of color scheme. Like there's a new ghost at the tavern here in Austin and I see him sitting in the same spot. He looks the same. He's got his little head down, but you can tell like if I'm looking at you versus if I'm looking at a dead mm -hmm. person next to you, which there's nobody, by the way, as far as I can oh, tell. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's new construction. <laughs> 
infrastructure ASMR, we'll call it. <laughs> but yeah, it, there, there's a different look to it. It's like, it's like they look slicker is, mm. is a way I could describe it. Like it's, and they're not necessarily like in the same form, like how that guy off to the side, the shadow figure is kind of a little more contraposto, whereas the man in mm-hmm. the painting is more, you know, poised and posed. Yeah. They kind of, you know, and sometimes they'll present in their death state. Like it's been a while since I've seen a ghost in their death state. Like I think it was 2019 was the last time I did. And that was pretty terrifying. Oh yeah. Um, which that just means that they're still, they still present in the matter that they died. So like if they were die, if they died by a bullet wound to the head, you would see a bullet wound in their head. Mm. Or like, I don't know if you watch the show <laughs> ghosts on CBS or not, but there's a character Pete that has an arrow through his neck. That would be Pete in his death state. Cause that's, uh. cool. but um, that's very off putting. Now the lady at Moody Manor that or Moody mansion rather that particularly fascinated me. Cause I've seen her twice now. Mm. I saw her when I was younger and I wasn't really telling people like, oh, hey, there's a ghost over there. Because, you know, that wasn't really an acceptable topic of conversation growing up outside of like ghost stories at Halloween. Yeah, And, you know, it was one of those things that I kind of clung to. And also that house really was one of the houses that I went to as a kid that really built my love up for old buildings and historical preservation and things like that. So I wanted to, I'm getting a little shaky talking about it. Um, I wanted to go back as an adult to see if I could see her. And then when I saw her, I just couldn't, I mean, you heard that big laugh that I, I did. I did. I was like, holy shit, there she is. <laughs> it but made me tear up watching the video. I yeah. teared up yeah. a little bit talking about it now because it was just, you need those little things of proof that keep you going. Like even if other people yeah. can't see it, like it keeps you on the path that you're on. And the fact that... Uh, I don't know the fact that she remembered me. I'm going to have to take my glasses off because I'm going to cry. But when I went into that front room and you kind of go off to the side where like the dining room is and there's a big conservatory area. When I was in that dining room, because at first I thought she was mad that I was there and maybe she doesn't like ghost hunters, which that would make sense with her background and her family. Yeah. And everything. It would make total sense. Um, Because some ghosts really don't want to talk to you. Like they're happy to exist amongst you, but they think you're the devil for talking to them, which... <laughs> Okay, I feel that. But but when she was so welcoming and she said, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming back. Like, I don't know. It's just that I, I needed that. And then I couldn't figure out like why the dining room was the place that I was having, like hearing the people giggling. Like you could almost hear plates clacking on a table that wasn't there. Like that's how visceral it felt. Wow. We went upstairs toward the rest of the building. And then as we were walking down, there was this really sweet little docent at the top of the stairs. And she was talking to some other people. And she kind of like we were just going to skirt past her and go down and not be like rude and intrusive in their conversation. But she kind of grabbed us and said, hey, did y'all have any questions? And we didn't. We just talked about how much we loved the house and everything. And she started telling us the story about. Mary's mother, Libby, about how she was such a woman ahead of her time. She was very modern in her approach about how she was inclusive with her children and family meals and parties and all these things. And I don't know, it just, I cried. And I'm one of those people that I cry a lot, but I feel like I'm slick and can cover it up. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> but I can really lie to myself about that. And I just, I couldn't help it. I teared up because you could just, you could feel it. Like it was yeah, her. And one of the things that was different from the time we went when I was a kid versus when Bert and I went for the episode was they were still kind of like opening the house up and building on the education center. So there weren't, it wasn't fully accessible. But then when we went this time upstairs, they had this area that was all of Mary Moody Northern's, uh, like her dresses and pictures of her with famous people. And there was one picture that we panned past at the episode. And like, that's what she looked like at the top of those stairs with that cool wow. hair all on top of her head and dress. And just it, that was her. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I want to jump in my car and drive to Galveston, like, right now. I'm like, I'm about five hours away. <laughs> I'm like, we're, I got to get to the Moody Mansion. I want to see. I love that. Hey, get in. We're going ghosting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it, well, it's interesting. You were talking about, you know, how some ghosts don't want you there. And I'm like, it, it's just like humanity. You've got to know what someone's intent is. You know, I imagine there's a lot of people whose intent is I want to rid you I want to get rid of you. I want to, you know, 
Um, yeah. And so they need to find out like what you, where your heart is. Mm-hmm. And I hate so- to sound like odd, but I think one of the things that best prepared me for being a paranormal investigator is I used to work in senior care and you'd be surprised. There's a big overlap between how ghosts act and how old people act. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of talk to them like they're my people I'm going to call bingo to later, you know, (laughs) and people always note that, that like, I just talk to them like people and I'm like, well, they were, and they might think they still are. (laughs) Yeah. So the question that kind of keeps popping up, especially as I'm looking at this painting, you were talking about, you know, hearing the, the energy of the kids running through the dining room and the, the energy of, you know, of, of the family in that in the moody mansion and so i'm looking at this painting where there's the spirit world where there's houses and there's lights and there's there's clearly life in it there you know the there's lights on in those houses which then people would be in the houses to have turned on those lights it's not gelling with sort of what i think my interpretation of like what a ghost would be which is like their remain, (laughs) I I guess maybe what I thought, and who knows, you know, we don't have any real answers on this. But what I thought is like, if a ghost was there, then they are maybe remaining for some reason, or like they're staying behind whenever all the other spirits went somewhere else. Like, but this painting, and then and in even your stories of your experiences, it feels like there's a whole other like it's not just this solitary ghost that there's a whole like community and a whole world of i don't know that's am i making sense it, like a community <laughs> yeah that's absolutely like app that's a great way to put it and one of the things in this painting that i think really like hones in on what you're saying beautifully is look at where the lights are in the painting versus where the lights aren't if this mm. was a typical scene at night, you would see a lot more illumination in those houses. But the fact that there's like just one over here and just one over there, it's like this little universe of ghosts of haunted houses almost. Yeah. And those houses are not, I mean, the ones in the foreground have a little bit more detail. We can kind of see a little bit of texture on the houses, but in most cases, they're just like line drawings of houses with, you know, the ground and the house being the same color. They're just like transparent. Mm-hmm. almost which is is interesting to me too it's like they're there but not there mm-hmm. and, you know one of the things that always fascinates me is people will move into a new house or a newly constructed house and they're like oh my house is haunted but you know it was built in like 2021 or whatever <laughs> it's like the the land's been there before 2020 mm-hmm. and the common approach to ghost hunting is that ghosts tend to stick with the land Mm. Um, they don't really move from place to place. And I don't know what that parameter is. Like, can you go a mile away from where you died? Can you, I don't know. Mm. But I also think we don't necessarily haunt where we died either. Um, there's a ghost yeah. at the tavern that is there that he definitely did not die there. Like I've seen his death records. I know where he died and when he died and how he died, but he's there long story short because somebody practiced a little left-handed magic on him because he was a son of a bitch in real life so (laughs) take the tour for more (laughs) (laughs) now i'm gonna go to austin on my way to galveston let's do it i'm gonna be on tour tonight you can be here by 7 30 do it (laughs) oh yeah i can i totally can do it oh Oh gosh, I it's so funny. Like what's happening in my brain is just cracking me up because I'm like, I am such a proof person, you know. I'm like, I need to know exactly. And I'm so like I'm looking it's like I'm I'm hearing your stories and then I'm seeing the painting and then I'm just like, oh, I'm looking for more and more like ways or not necessarily proof, but understanding of how it works. That's that's what it is. Cause I do that with like I'll sit there and watch a squirrel for an hour, like, how not, <laughs> what are your natural instincts? <laughs> and, and so I'll like analyze the squirrel for an hour. So it's like that's what is happening with for me too. I'm like, I need to know every detail of how this works. I used to do the same thing with my middle school students, just watch and be like, How do you operate? <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if there's an answer to that question. No, there's not a middle, <laughs> middle school st- <laughs> chaos and Murphy's law. So. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Oh, it's fun. All right. So what else? So let's go back into the painting. What else are you noticing? One of the things I just noticed while we were talking about the houses is if you look at the head of the figure over on the right, 
there's a lot more bleed in between him and the window than one realizes when you first Mm. look like you can Mm. almost see where the houses almost extend into what we're supposed to be looking out into. I don't know if that's implying that like maybe that's the town and this is the house within the town, but it does kind of give that again. It's like that motion you feel with the spirit world versus the lack of motion you feel in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a, a fuzziness that. And to go back to like the the kinetic nature of the spirit world, like look at that hand on the table. Like it's almost like it's double exposed almost. Like you mm. can just feel it moving back and forth. Oh, you know, I didn't even register that as a hand. Yeah. And it kind of plays with, again, that translucent nature of the tablecloth and the, I don't know. I just, I love that placement of that tablecloth. Mm-hmm. And that the color of that tablecloth is what was in my imagination when you were talking about the color of 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 uh, the spirits. You were you were talking, didn't you say something about a bright mm-hmm. blue and like this like slickness? There's it's some similar to that, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it doesn't with... fit mm-hmm. in that space. I wouldn't see that tablecloth being in that space. So mm-hmm. it's like, but I don't. It doesn't fit in the other space either. It's just sort of yeah. in between. Well, and the chairs appear to be two different chairs, too. Mm -hmm. And usually in a room like that, you'd see like a matching set, maybe. But definitely, I just noticed that because one has more of like a yellow bottom and no arms. And then the other one has arms. Mm -hmm. I just I'm obsessed with this painting. I'm gonna have to get a print for my house. (laughs) I'm glad you chose it. I, I, I kept it in and I was like, I don't know. I don't know about this one. I was like, well, she, but you know, but it's what do you know about in. the artist? Nothing. Oh, there's yeah. the Google. <laughs> yeah, I'm, my my really philosophy on art and looking at art. I have a degree in art history, but I don't care about the artists. <laughs> I'm gonna do, but like I don't I don't read about them. I don't know about them um, uh, because I really just want the art to be its thing. I mean, and, but there are certain artists where you're just like, you see their lives in it and that's really interesting. And I can see how people are interested in that. Mm -hmm. Um, me personally, just not as interested. So I don't, (laughs) well, and a lot of the cool art that I find these days for, especially for the podcast, I'm I'm looking for more contemporary things. I'm looking for newer things and looking for things that are not in the art history textbooks. There's nothing right written about a lot of these artists and paintings because they're not like the quote unquote famous ones, you know? Well, so. I love that approach because it lets the viewer assign value to it versus the prominence of it to assign yeah. value to it. So that, I love that approach. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And you're you're the authority on your experience of the artwork. There so. you go. I like, I like I'm my own authority on ghosts. <laughs> yeah, there you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look at us looping it back around. <laughs> oh. So what do you, so that going back to sort of that fuzziness of the, the head and kind of bleeding into the window, tell me more about like your interpretation of that or what that could mean or any thoughts you have about. Kawhi. I mean, it could, I don't know. It kind of gives the feeling that like they're present with us wherever we are too. Cause there's mm-hmm. that feeling of being present within your home, but there's also the feeling of being like present within a town with them and You know, when people have ghosts in their house that they're okay with, I call them their invisible roommates. And this guy very much comes across like he's somebody's invisible roommate. Yeah. You know, he seems like the type of ghost that would be like curious and looking into stuff, like wouldn't really mess with them. But it kind of gives you that. It's kind of a little comforting that there's ghosts everywhere, but it's also a little paranoid that ghosts are everywhere. You know, people always like to ask me, do you think ghosts will watch you shower? I'm like, no, I think they're respectful of people the same way that humans would sit there and watch you shower. So, you know. I can't, I can't imagine there is a handful of ghosts that maybe would. There's a handful of people that maybe A handful of people that would. So the ones that are carving the holes in the, you know, locker room walls that you see on movies, like that ghost. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Or like the little but, old men that walk up to you in a grocery store. Why aren't you smiling? Can you imagine that dude as a ghost? Just in the <laughs> of night, Why aren't you smiling? Oh. <laughs> Thinking of one very specific gentleman I had while I was in senior care. Oh, God. Yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine my grandma watch, walk, watching me walk around with no shoes on and just being appalled. Like, 
<laughs> how I'm never wearing shoes. Like that, she would just live her an entire ghost spirithood. It's just like, put on your shoes. Why is she not wearing shoes? <laughs> Anyway, now I'm imagining everyone I know as ghosts, and it's fun. Uh, so, the, yeah, this I, I I feel that, like, presence with this figure, too. Like, he doesn't feel ominous. He feels – and then there's something about the way that it's drawn, which I don't – I don't know why, but if he feels like he's moving forward into the space. Like, it's like a, a leaning in. Yeah, um, it's like he's leaning forward as he's walking. Yeah. Like, not necessarily like he's on his feet, but almost like he's dragging his feet with his shoulders yeah. up. So he is like entering the space. He's a he's a part of it. Is he well, going he, to the chair? I don't. You know what, what's he doing? Well, and the way I look at it is like he's got his back to us and he's entering the room because that's kind of the motion that we're getting. But notice how his arms kind of like dragging behind him almost. Mm-hmm. That's, I like that. It just yeah. again it gives it that movement. Now the other place where we really get movement in the room is the fireplace and the transition between like the ghost world and the real world. That's yeah. the only real like kinetic feel we get there. Yeah, yeah I can that that like um, tunneling of space from the fireplace back into the uh-huh. into the ghost town. Like you almost feels. feel if you were looking at the room from like the perspective of you're looking at the fireplace that you could just walk into that realm mm-hmm. through the fireplace almost. Yeah, like turning my body so I can pretend like I'm walking into. <laughs> <laughs> get it I do it all the time because uh, and sometimes i think i'm like if i turn if i if i go like this is it gonna look different i'm like no it's flat it's it doesn't but i want it to <laughs> right we want it to magnetize somehow <laughs> it makes me think i just went to santa fe recently and i went to meow wolf and there's this kind of normal house where mm-hmm. the have you ever been there not yet but my no. kids have been a few times i love it yeah. And so like the, the house is, there's clearly like a mystery and there's clearly like things you're trying to solve. But like, if you go into like the fridge or you go into the dryer or the fireplace or like in the back of the closet, you go, you go back into this like completely different world of mm-hmm. uh, aliens and uh, you can't even explain it. So, so weird. But how I got my first time when I went is I went, I crawled through the fireplace to get back there yeah. And so I just, every time I look at that fireplace and being able to crawl back into this whole different world makes me think of, um, of Meow Wolf. Uh, yeah, Cause you can kind of see it. it. Like there's like a weird glow and you're like, what, what is that? And so you just, mm-hmm. um, and it kind of gives you like this, like whip around feeling too. Like you're, again, you're entering a space, but you could almost like unnaturally turn and be in a different part of that space. Mm-hmm. You know, like one of the things I do notice is see at the bottom, the chimneys from the ghost world, how they're very prominent. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more prominent than the man is. If you look at it, like with the detailing they're drawn with. Yeah, they're more um, solid and three dimensional. Um, Yeah, like everything else. But it also kind of goes with that hard line that we've got going through the. That's just fascinating to me that they're like hard lines and then more like organic forms because. You know, I described it earlier as like a vignette around the room, mm-hmm. but a vignette would be a little more, uh, what's the word, congruent, you know, like it'd be yeah. the same on both sides, but this one isn't. It's very much like you're pulling into it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, as you were talking about that, I started to follow the darkness um, on the left, following it up to the to the top corner and how it becomes the shadow on the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... That's kind of uh, confusing me a little bit too, because I'm like, is that shadow on the ceiling part of the spirit world, or is it like a reflection of it? Because the yeah, the lighting in that room is is really confusing. How well, and on my computer. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go no, you go ahead. On my computer screen, it kind of looks like you can almost see some of the wallpaper through that top shadow part. I don't know, maybe that's just my screen, but you can see. Uh, Oh yeah, like, um, on the left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that just—I don't know if that's some of the blending in. Oh, like like, like right in, on the black, like right here. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I can see. I mean, there are, there is something there. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, a layer. Weird. It's like he painted the wallpaper and then put the black over it, which yeah. Is cool. I wonder how much, it, like, if he painted the, like, how far he painted into the room before he started putting the spirit world in, too. Yeah, because I'm looking, if you look at the second, or the, the left candlestick, uh-huh. if you look through the black, you can almost see. 
Oh, crap. Yeah. The shape of the candlestick. I see. Yeah. That bottom part, especially. Uh huh. Wow. And like no, the no. chair at the bottom, how it like starts solid on the right and then it becomes, it, it's kind of disappears in some places, but in some places it becomes less detailed. So that chair is both in both places. Yeah, it's definitely got a presence. Like it's half in one and half in the other. Mm-hmm. Like I'm wondering if that was like his chair or there's like more special mm-hmm. significance to this chair versus the one that's further removed from the spirit world. It's kind of in the same way how the, um, the lines of the interior of the um, the fireplace kind of blend in that almost looks like it could be another building or just the mm-hmm. way that like that, that blends so nicely. Yeah. And then it, it does that same kind of fading out thing where it becomes like that happens in the chair, whereas it, it's more solid and more um, the lines are more straight and that it, it's more detailed. And then as it gets to the left, I'm talking about this like right side of the fireplace that it's, it's the lines get a little bit more wonky and a little bit more chaotic, a little less straight, mm-hmm. um, which is true of the figure too. Like, you know, his lines are more curvy and wonky and, and uh, it's like the, it makes me think of, um, and it's the stupidest example, but it's what it popped in my head is, you know, when was it Wayne's world where they would do this like wavy hand thing? Yeah. It's like, for some reason, that's what I'm imagining. Like it's, it's that oh, doo doo part. Yes. It is the fiddly boop. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Love it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, what a wonderful world where we're talking about art history and Wayne's world at the same time. Like, I know. I love it. I love it. Eye, Dr. Pepper to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like trying to think of some sort of a tel- intelligent way to talk about that effect of the diddly doo, but it's like, well, Wayne's World is it. <laughs> oh, now, the the I guess one of the final things I find fascinating in this is the where the artist puts detail in the real world room versus where he doesn't put detail in the real world mm. room. Like there's not, you can kind of see the lines, you get the implication of where it is and like the wainscoting, the floorboarding, things like that. But where he's placed the most detail and line work is in the wallpaper. Yeah. Like if you really give it a look, like there's like, there's implied like dental working would work on like the fireplace, but he really put a lot of detail mm-hmm. into that wallpaper. Yeah. Also, like the dinginess of the house that's kind of implied in the woodwork. Like, yeah. I really enjoy that because you kind of get some dinginess up in that um, the drapery, too. Yeah. And I feel it on the wallpaper, too. It just has that sort of mm-hmm. aged yellowy, yellowy yeah. look to it. Like patina to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, I love like that dingy fireplace. So, like, that's just so cool. Yeah. Oh, okay, I just looked at the time because I was like, I feel like I could talk to you for like six more hours. <laughs> like I'm going to ask you every question about your entire <laughs> life. Um, is there anything left in the painting that you feel kind of left unsaid or that is calling you to talk about before we wrap up? The only other thing that I can think of is the repetition of twos. There's two walls that you can see. There's two mm. chairs, there's two candlesticks. There's two worlds. There's two paintings. Like it's it's a repetition of twos. Yeah. Like I, I love looking at stuff like that. Like, ooh, where's the math of it all? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I see that too. And like, huh? It's like a a balancing. You know, if you look at. Mm-hmm and stuff but well even like you know this this the the figure balanced with the the city thing on the left you know that too oh excellent okay so we've been talking for almost an hour so i think we probably could could stop (laughs) um (laughs) unfortunately can you tell our listeners where to find you you know you mentioned all that at the beginning but we're gonna put links to everything but remind them again um about your youtube channel where they can you know if you you have any social media channels that you have to point us to we would love to uh, follow more of your work 
Oh, yeah, definitely. So our main area is we're on YouTube. We're Unearthly History and Paranormal Investigation, which is a very long title, but it says everything it needs to say. Yeah. And then on all of the social medias on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, and Twitter, we're at Unearthly Paranormal. And we're very active on our TikTok, like love the TikTok. I think we've got around like 140K followers or something like oh, that. Nice. It's Yeah, we really have some fun engagement and interactions on that side so yeah come follow us on all the things we love it excellent so you can get to the show notes yeah get to the show notes to see the um picture of the artwork and um all of those links to your social medias and your youtube channels and thank you so much for joining me today that was so fun this was really fun like anytime (laughs) i'd love to come back and hang out you're a lot of fun (laughs) awesome thank you so much yeah thank you have a good rest of your day you too Thank you so much for listening to Art and Self. And if you loved what you heard, please consider leaving me a rating or a review on iTunes. And share this episode with one friend who you know needs to hear what we talked about today. You will find links to the artworks that we discuss over at the show notes at artandself.com. And you can also join my email list to get notified of all of the new upcoming episodes. The videos of these episodes are also available over on YouTube at Art and Self. And you can also follow me on social media, on Instagram at Art and Self, and on Facebook at Art and Self Cindy. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time.